Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will cover the module parametric and non-parametric tests of independence for CFA level 1 2025. If you find this video useful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any update. Let's get started. So there are two learning outcome statements in this module. We'll cover them one by one. Explain parametric and non-parametric tests of hypothesis that the population correlation coefficient equals zero and determine whether the hypothesis is rejected at a given level of significance. So we are concerned with the test of population correlation coefficient. So let rho be the Pearson correlation coefficient. Our two-sided hypothesis, our alternate hypothesis null hypothesis is that the correlation coefficient is zero and we need to test whether this stands true or false. So our alternate hypothesis in this case is rho not equal to zero. If we are concerned with the one sided test then we will define it as that h not the null hypothesis is rho less than or equal to zero versus the alternate hypothesis that rho is greater than 0 and on the left side we are concerned with that hypothesis null hypothesis is rho greater than or equal to 0 versus the null hypothesis that is rho less than 0. We are not concerned with calculating the correlation coefficient here but we are testing the significance of the correlation coefficient. If the two variables are normally distributed we can test to determine whether the null hypothesis should be rejected sim use simply using the sample correlation r. So the formula for the t test is t is equal to r times n minus 2 divided by square root of 1 minus r square with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. So the magnitude of r needed to reject the null hypothesis decreases as sample size and increases because see the t stat is directly proportional to r and n. So if n increases we need less magnitude of r to reject the hypothesis. As n increases the number of degrees of freedom increases and the absolute value of the critical value of the t stat decreases. The absolute value of the numerator increases with larger n resulting in larger magnitude of the calculated t stat. So we can clearly see from this table that as the degrees of freedom increases the absolute value with respect to a particular level of significance decreases the critical value sorry the critical value decreases and as n increases we know that the numerator increases from this formula. When sampling from the same population, a false null hypothesis is more likely to be rejected as we increase the sample size. That means the power of the test increases as we increase the sample size because a higher number of observation increases the numerator of test stat. And population under consideration meaningfully departs from normality, we can use a test based on the Spearman rank correlation coefficient. The calculation of RS requires the steps. First of all, rank the observations on X and Y from largest to smallest because we have got two samples X and Y. We are checking the correlation between these two samples. So what we will do is we'll rank the observations from largest to smallest. Then calculate the difference between the ranks for each pair of observations on x and y and then calculate the di square that is the squared difference in ranks. With n as the sample size the Spearman rank correlation coefficient is given by this formula. Now for small samples we require a specialized table of critical values but for large samples we can conduct a t stat using the stat that we used 
for population correlation coefficient with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. Explain tests of independence based on contingency table data. So a contingency table is used to check correlation of two categorical variables. We are testing the independence of one category with respect to the other. So for example, we have a data of different ETFs which are classified based on investment style and size. So we want to test whether the investment style depends upon the size or vice versa. So we'll use a T squared distributed test stat. The formula is given here. Here M is the number of cells in the table, which is the number of groups in the first class multiplied by the number of groups in the second class. OIJ is the number of observations in each cell of row I and column J. EIJ is the expected number of observations in each cell of row I and row column J assuming independence that is the expected frequency of that particular category is given here and the test set has R minus 1 and C minus 1 degrees of freedom. Now how to calculate the expected value? The expected value for each cell is total of row I and times the total of column J divided by the overall total. It will be much more clear from this example. So we have given the data, we are given the data of different ETFs. It represents the size and it represents the investment style. So in each cell you are given that there are 50 small value funds, there are 110 medium value funds and there are 343 large value funds. So we calculate the total of each row and the total for each column. This is your overall total. This table here gives the expected values calculated. From this formula, these are the expected values for each cell. And this is your T squared test stat. So the total T squared test stat is the sum of these individual parameters. So that comes at 32.08025 and the degrees of freedom are 4. So we'll reject the null hypothesis if the calculated test stat is greater than 9.4877 which is the critical value for degrees of freedom 4. This one. So since our test stat is greater than the critical value of 9.4877 we'll reject the null hypothesis. So this is it for this module. I hope you liked the video. Please do comment if you have any doubts related to the CFA level, level 1 curriculum. And you will find the link to download the presentation in the description box. I will see you in the next video when we will discuss the simple linear regression model. Thank you very much.